Welcome back to Dividend Dynamics. Today, we're delving into a key aspect of value investing, the Benjamin Graham formula for intrinsic value. This formula has been a fundamental tool for investors seeking to understand the true worth of growth stocks. Benjamin Graham, the father of value investing, introduced this formula in his seminal work, The Intelligent Investor. Aimed at the average investor, it was a revolutionary approach to evaluating the potential of growth stocks. However, Graham emphasized its limitations and cautioned against over-reliance on any single formula. Originally, the Graham formula was meant to simplify the valuation process, but it's important to note that Graham himself pointed out that this method was not a definitive tool for making investment decisions. It was instead a way to model the expected results of growth stocks, considering the market conditions of his time. You can download The Intelligent Dividend Investor for 2024. This booklet is based on the esteemed book, The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. Here, we will review which principles are relevant today and not just for 2024. The Graham formula, conceived by Benjamin Graham, known as the father of value investing and a Columbia University professor, is a method for valuing growth stocks. Featured in his renowned book, The Intelligent Investor, the formula was intended for everyday investors to appraise growth stocks, popular during the era of its creation. Graham advised caution in its application, recommending its use primarily for financially robust companies and advising against employing it for firms with subpar debt positions. He suggested focusing the formula's use on companies meeting certain criteria of financial strength. The Intelligent Investor, a seminal work in value investing, was a culmination of principles taught by Benjamin Graham at Columbia Business School since 1928, further refined with David Dodd. This investment philosophy also resonated with Graham's followers like Irving Kahn and Walter Schloss. Warren Buffett, a notable disciple of Graham, adopted these value investing principles from the book early in his career, using them to shape his own investment strategies from the age of 20. In my Google Sheet under Graham Valuation, we also use intrinsic value to evaluate stocks. In this video, we'll delve deeper so that you can gain a better understanding of how to evaluate stocks and learn about the history of the Graham Valuation Method. It's going to be very interesting, so make sure to watch the video until the end. Intrinsic value. Now let's explore a crucial concept in value investing through the example of the Microsoft stock, intrinsic value. What does this term really mean? Intrinsic value is like the financial true north of a company. It's an estimate of a company's genuine worth based on its actual financial performance and business prospects, not just the current price tag it carries on the stock market. Think of intrinsic value as the sum of all future cash flows of a company, discounted back to their present value. It takes into account earnings, dividends, and even the company's growth potential. This value can differ significantly from the current market price, which is often influenced by market sentiment, news, and other external factors. Why is this concept so important? For value investors like us, intrinsic value is the cornerstone of investment decision-making. It helps us identify whether a stock is undervalued, meaning it's selling for less than its true worth, or overvalued, selling for more. Let's break it down. The formula starts with EPS, the earnings per share from the last 12 months. It then adds the product of the expected annual growth rate and a factor of 2 to the PE base of 8.5, which represents a no-growth company. Benjamin Graham, the pioneer of value investing, introduced a simplified yet profound formula in his books, Security Analysis and The Intelligent Investor. He crafted this formula to estimate the intrinsic value of growth stocks based on their earnings and expected growth. Graham's formula strips down complex valuation to its essence providing a tool for investors to estimate a stock's worth with reasonable expectations. It's not just math, it's the legacy of one of the greatest investment minds. The formula as described by Graham originally in the 1962 edition of Security Analysis, and then again in the 1973 edition of The Intelligent Investor is as follows. Now let's dive deeper in the Google Sheet, where I will explain the details. You can download this Google Sheet. The link is in the description below this video. If we look at the formula first, EPS, or earnings per share, is a financial metric calculated by dividing a company's profit by the outstanding shares of its common stock. It serves as an indicator of a company's profitability on a per share basis, allowing investors to assess the amount of money a company makes for each share of its stock. It's a common tool used by investors to gauge a company's financial health and performance relative to others. In the Graham formula, the figure 8.5 represents the PE base for a no-growth company. This number is used as a starting point in the formula to which the growth rate is added. The PE, price to earnings ratio, is a fundamental analysis indicator that relates a company's share price to its per share earnings. The 8.5 figure is intended to reflect the PE ratio of a company that is expected not to see any growth, essentially providing a baseline valuation from which to start the calculation. 
Looking at our sheet, intrinsic value OLD is derived from the original Graham formula. It multiplies the earnings per share, or EPS, by the sum of 8.5 and twice the expected growth rate. For instance, if a company has an EPS of $10 and the expected growth rate is 4, 74%, the calculation would be 10.3 times, 8.5 plus 2 times 4.75. This method served as a beacon for investors seeking to gauge a stock's potential value long before modern digital tools became available. It's a fascinating look at how the fundamentals of investing remain unchanged over time. In the context of the Graham formula for stock valuation, G represents the expected annual growth rate of the company's earnings per share, EPS, over a period of time, typically 7 to 10 years. It's a projection of how much the company's earnings are anticipated to increase each year, on average, during that time frame. This rate is crucial in determining the stock's intrinsic value as it compounds the earnings element of the formula, reflecting the potential for future profitability. Benjamin Graham, recognizing the impact of interest rates, later refined his formula to better suit the changing market. The revised formula incorporates the yield on AAA corporate bonds to adjust the original calculation. The revised formula is a blend of earnings, growth, and the cost of capital. It's a more nuanced tool that calculates the intrinsic value by considering the current interest rates, providing a dynamic approach to valuing a company's stock. By updating his formula to include interest rates, Graham gave us a way to value stocks that account for the economic climate, offering a perspective that remains relevant for today's investor. The Graham formula is a method to calculate the intrinsic value of a stock based on its earnings per share, EPS, the expected growth, G and accounting for the risk-free rate represented by the yield on AAA corporate bonds, Y. It's represented as, here, V is the intrinsic value, EPS is the trailing 12-month earnings per share, 8.5 is the assumed PE ratio of a no-growth company, G is the expected growth rate for the company's earnings over the next 7 to 10 years, and Y is the current yield on AAA corporate bonds, which provides a benchmark for the risk-free rate. This formula aims to give investors a conservative estimate of a stock's true value. The intrinsic value, VOLD, generally refers to the original intrinsic value calculated using Benjamin Graham's earlier formula, while the intrinsic value, V, typically reflects the updated calculation, which includes adjustments for the prevailing interest rate environment by incorporating the yield on AAA corporate bonds. The original formula didn't account for the current interest rate, while the revised formula does offering a potentially more accurate reflection of a stock's intrinsic value in today's economic context. Comparing the two helps investors see how the valuation might change when considering different market conditions. Let's use Microsoft as an example to understand the difference between the intrinsic value V, OLD, and the revised intrinsic value V using our Dividend Dynamics Valuation tool. In the tool, we've inputted Microsoft's key financial data, the EPS, the growth rate, and the yield of AAAA bonds. These figures form the basis of our calculation. First, the intrinsic value, VOLD. This is calculated using Graham's original formula, where we multiply Microsoft's EPS with the sum of 8.5 and twice its growth rate. Now, let's look at the revised intrinsic value, V. Here, we adapt the original formula by including the yield of AAA bonds. This modification reflects the influence of the current interest rate environment on stock valuation. By comparing these two values for Microsoft, we can see the impact of considering the prevailing interest rates in the valuation process. It's a fascinating insight into how even small changes in a formula can significantly affect stock valuation. In The Intelligent Investor, Graham emphasized that his formula was more of a theoretical model than a practical tool for investors. This was a footnote initially, which later editions unfortunately relegated to the back, leading to some misconceptions. This relocation of the footnote led to a widespread belief that Graham used this formula routinely. However, he warned that such calculations should not be seen as highly reliable for projecting future stock prices. Investment experts like Benjamin Clark highlight that Graham's formula should be used to estimate intrinsic value within a margin of safety, acknowledging the potential errors in calculation. Graham himself noted the formula's limitations, particularly for high-growth stocks. As we conclude our exploration of the Graham formula, it's clear that while this tool offers valuable insights, it also embodies the complexities and uncertainties of stock valuation. Remember, investing is not just about formulas, it's about understanding the broader economic landscape and the unique aspects of each company. Let's use the Graham formula as a guide, but not the only source of wisdom in our investment journey. Thank you for joining us today on Dividend Dynamics.
If you enjoyed this video, please consider sharing it, liking it, and subscribing to my channel.